Okay, we've got the beginning of our node spaghetti for our vector group. Before we go further on that, let's get the rest of the empties we'll need for our object textures. Size mesh, I'll get rid of this old empty. I've got my 3D cursor in the center of my left eye. So we'll add a circle there. Of course, it is huge, because remember, my eyes are down to 0.05 each, because I'm working with the dimensions of one blender unit equals one meter. So from my previous version of this, I already know that the size I want for my iris is about 0.01. And the actual size you set here won't influence the textures, only the scale does, which is why we're leaving that as one, so that it doesn't add too many variables. And I'm using this size, I'll use this as a visual guide for my iris texture. And we're going to set it to always be in front, just so we don't lose track of it. The duplicate it. And I know for the pupil, I want point oh oh four, And then we can snap the 3D cursor here, copy it. That's the right side. And the same there. Okay, now we want to set up nodes for all of those. So we're going to have to take texture coordinates and copy it a bunch of times. Iris on top with the right side on top. And here we do see one of the weaknesses of this workflow is that you do need to assign a bunch of objects. So if you are using this uh, method on lots of different characters, you've got to set this up for every character and it has to be a different version of the material for each character. It's about time we throw all of this into a group. And here is a note when using vector input on groups. We can see that this is a uh, all three transform channels, all three uh, vector channels for this input. And that's what you'll get if you create the input using the vector socket on a separate XYZ or a mapping node. But note, if we use a diffuse shader, and use the normal socket, it doesn't have all three, so it's a bit cleaner. But if we then duplicate that, it does have all three. So just a pet peeve of mine, I like to set up my inputs like this. We're going to need five, four objects in UV. So go ahead and name those. And now we can plug everything in. And once it's plugged in to save some space, I'm gonna hit Control H. And since that's just the UV, we don't need an object. Now, of course, if you wanted to use a specific UV map, then you'd wanna use this one. So I guess we could just use that, the UV node directly and choose our UV map. Sure, we get the right node matched with the right input, and I didn't make any mistakes. We can make sure that they're lined up properly. Name group, save it, and on the inside, plug in that UV. Now, let's come over here. This is all our UV texture, so we'll leave them off there. And let's get ourselves an output so that we can actually see what we're, what we're doing. So that's just our coordinate coming through. And now we will see our first issue if we give ourselves a gradient texture. Set it to sphere, plug in, and render and it's just white where's the sphere well the problem is that since this is size one and this is size 0.05 per eye the sphere is like this big right now so we're going to need to scale things down 
So let's get a scale control in here for these. It's going to be the good old mapping node set to texture as usual. And let's just look at one of these here. Add a value, plug it in, and if we scale it down enough, we can see our texture. That's on the right side, because I'm using the right one, of course. And, of course, 0 0.025 is half of 0 0.05, which means that the sphere is going to fit into that shape nicely, because the uh, radius is, well, half of the whole, something like that. There's math involved there, but... I know this is the right number because I already built this once. So that's the right number, and I guess we could do this one for each, but there's actually a shortcut we can take already, which is that we can use our handy mix RGB and our right and left mask here, which I will pull out to branch from, and start making things simpler already. What we want is to use our left and right mask to control which of the vectors it uses on which of our two eyes. So if we do that, now our sphere is there twice, because we're saying on this side to use one vector and on this side to use the other. Of course, the vectors are different. So there you go, nice and easy. At like that, we'll go ahead and make that for the pupils as well, because we're going to be using that. And now, it's not enough just to scale it here. Let's give ourselves a bit more control of the scale. We can make this a multiply with the control outset group in case we want to adjust things. Set that to a minimum of zero and a maximum of ten, just so we can scrub it more conveniently. And here we can use whatever number we think is appropriate. I said 0.25 for four, but it kind of depends how big you want your default sphere to be. It doesn't really matter how you go about doing it. And of course, we can now scrub this conveniently to see what happens. If we go to zero, of course, it's going to disappear. Now we can go and put our object to UV group to use. Let's hook up our image texture. And we don't see anything because it's set to scale two. We'll set to scale one. We don't need to change the scale in the group itself because we've already set this to scale the vector down before it goes into the group. So now we should have our two different iris empties working for the two different sides of the eyes. But we do have a little problem, which is that this texture is not mirrored on the different sides, which you're probably going to want. If you don't want it, well, you can keep a version of this. Let's go ahead and get this mirrored. And the way we do that is by setting the X scale to be negative one. But since this is already plugged into our scale, we need to do a little bit of work to access it. So we'll get ourselves a combine XYZ. And for Y and Z, it could just stay like this. But for the X, what we're going to do again is get ourselves a mix node. And have that be run off of this, with our left to right, because we just want to change this for one of the sides. And we'll need another multiply node. And we'll take this and we'll multiply it by minus one to flip it. And the second input, and that's our X. And now it is mirrored. Although I think we might want it the other way around. Like that. There we go. Now we're getting some serious notes spaghetti here. So now let's make a version of this for the pupil and also organize these notes.
We can also add a scale control for the UVs, since we might as well have that. Copy this, but note when you copy these inputs, it doesn't also copy the default or the mid max. I want to make sure we get the default right. And of course, rename that. And also note that when you scale UVs, go ahead and plug one of those in. When you scale them, it does scale to that bottom left corner. So that's not necessarily going to be desirable with image textures, but if you're using this for procedural textures, there are times where you could want to do that. Now we just need to make all the outputs we're going to need and we will be finished. Okay, group is finished. There are things that could be changed or that you could tweak in your version. For example, I've made the left eye the dominant one for texture painting. You could have the right eye. You could flip the way these masks work. You could change which of these is flipped, whatever you want in that area. You could change the default scale values. You know, this could be uh, 0.025 and these could be scaled differently. Up to you on what you want your default settings to be. Let's review everything we've got. We've got our left and right mask. We have our UVs mirrored, flipped, and extended. We've got our iris object, and of course that is affected by the scale. And we have our pupil, which is affected by the pupil scale. And we've got our object UV textures, which are also affected by those, and are more convenient than the real UVs in a lot of ways because you can do things like scale them to the center. Though there are ways to set that up for UVs, but that's not the subject. So there we go, our vector group is done and all working, and now we can move on. In the next video, we're going to be getting into this group where we use procedural textures to make masks for the different areas of our object. Again, this looks scary, but we're actually only going to be looking at about a third of this group because this is just lots of different things that I've stuffed in the same group for organizational purposes.
and we're going to learn about how to use any gradient to produce lines and masks. Remember, you can get the full eye setup already if you support me on Patreon either in February or March, or you can pick it up on Gumroad for slightly more.